Hello. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the second day of our week of revival here at Pasay Adventist Church. So before we start, may we request everyone to please bow your heads for a word of prayer. O oh, great God and Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing us here once again in your house of worship to study and meditate upon your word through Pastor Randy Skeet. Please, Lord God, let your holy angels join us in singing, Lord, as you open the gates of heaven for us. We love you so much. In Jesus' loving name, we pray. Amen. For our first song, shall we open our essay hymnal to 304, Faith of Our Father. For our second song, shall we sing hymn number 300, Rock of Ages? For our opening song, shall we all sing wonderful words of life? Hymnal 286.
May we request everybody to kneel down for our opening prayer. <clears throat> our most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we praise you today with our hearts and songs. We praise you for your faithfulness, for your great power and love. Dear God, we thank you for gathering us here again today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fail us. Thank you for reminding us that you are the word. You are the God that gives us life and light. We find comfort in that promise that you are always in our midst. Father, we also pray for our speaker tonight, a man of God, Pastor Randy Skeet. Please come and be his shepherd now. Anoint his words with authority and grace that he might reveal more of your truth and love to all of us. Lastly, Father, we also ask for your forgiveness for the things that we have committed against thee, for the things that are displeasing and dishonoring to you. Please forgive us. Um, please, please bless this week of prayer and service and help us grow in your faith and understanding of your word. This is our humble prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Good evening, everyone, and um, we welcome you again for, uh, for this uh, evening to hear uh, the words of God to be delivered by our speaker, Aaron, Pastor Randy Skeet. Now, um, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge those who arrived uh, with enthusiasm. So, and for that, we are giving you a small token. May we call on Mr. Lelit Ogabar, who came first at 5.30 in the afternoon. Where is Lelit? Can you please accept your uh, gift? Next is uh, Melvin Duenas. He came it at 6 p.m. very early. Where's Melvin Duenas? Sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then, another, and for the last, uh, we have Vicente Celibidad Jr. He came at 5.40 in the afternoon. Thank you so much for arriving early, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> So, um, I'm inviting everybody to uh, relax, um, uh, ask for the Holy Spirit to, be, to help us understand uh, the words of God for today, for tonight. Um, we understand that the Word will be our light upon our feet, and God and Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He came here, and the Word was uh, made flesh to give us the truth in a world full of deception, full of lies so that we may be guided, and um, we are urging you to open your hearts, open your ears, and um, sincerely listen to every word, because this, the message for tonight is very beautiful. And for that, we would like to hear from our um, inspiration. Thank you so much.
I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God is good. And all the time. Psalm 100 verse 5. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. I repeat that, the Lord is good. And according to Malachi 3 verse 6, I am the Lord, I change not. God is always good. Psalm 145 verse 17, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. In other words, everything God does is righteous and holy, including when he destroys people. Will someone say amen for God? Amen. God never does anything wrong. The problem lies with our finite minds unable to fully understand how God functions. My testimony about God is simply this. God has never done me anything wrong. Never. All my problems I have brought on myself. All my blessings have come from God. God has never done anything wrong to me. And I will go to my grave thanking him for that. How was your day? Good. You looking forward to work tomorrow? Will you work hard? You know, hard work glorifies God. I did not say overwork glorifies God. I said hard work glorifies God. Overwork does not, because in all things we must practice temperance. Who is with us tonight? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. You are here for the first time. May I see your hand? First time. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you and you, very specifically. I saw your hand. God bless you. Anybody else? You are not. And for anyone online who is not a Seventh-day Adventist, we are honored by your presence, and may God bless you abundantly. And at this time, I will offer a special prayer for all our guests. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, and with the full support of this church, I ask you to pronounce a special blessing on our guests. Father, you know their needs. You decide the blessing. All we ask of you, Father, bless them as quickly as possible and put a double blessing on their families and children. Bring them back tomorrow night, Father. In Jesus' name, let God's people say amen, amen and amen. Let me tell you, I missed you during the day. I enjoyed myself with you so By the way, who was present last night? Can I see your hands? You were here last night. I had what is called a ball last night. I really, really enjoyed my interaction with you, although sometimes I thought I was a little hard on you, but nobody fainted, so I guess that was okay. And I look forward to another good time tonight. And so thank you so much for the way you blessed me last night, and may the Holy Spirit direct all our discussion that we might be even more blessed this evening. Our subject for this evening, what was our subject last night? Three and one. What were the three? Yes. Our subject this evening, three in one, part two. So that's simple. Three in one, part two. Before I get into that message, make sure my phone is off. If you're using this as a Bible, which it isn't, then make sure the sound is turned off. If you don't need it, 
turn it off completely so that it does not ring as we're worshiping the God of heaven and earth. Does God deserve reverence, yes or no? All right. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9, Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. And I surely, as God lives, I want to speak God's words. And favor number three, think as you listen. Isaiah 1.18, Come now, let us do what? Reason together, saith the Lord. Let's reason together. Let us think, pray for me, and make sure these things are turned off. Father in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. The only name you accept as a mediator between us and you. If we've sinned, forgive us, dear God, please, and grant to us the ministry of your Spirit, that he may speak through me, Father, and enlighten those listening. Bless those online, teach them as you teach us. Father, grant a special blessing to all our guests. Bless every country represented by those watching, particularly the host country of the Philippines. Now, dear God, possess me 100%, I pray. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Go with me to the book of Revelation chapter 20. We'll read verse 10. Revelation 20, reading verse 10. It is five minutes to seven. I'll release you no later than 7.30. If that's fine, say amen. amen. All right. I know you've got to prepare for work tomorrow. But let me tell you this as you're looking for Revelation 20. When you make time for God, God will make up any deficit you may suffer. Let me explain this way. I always tell students, never sacrifice the Bible for the sake of your physics book. Always have time for God's Word, because the inventor of physics is God. Are you with me? And so give God His time, and God will bless your mind. He will bless your studies. He will move upon the mind of the professor to set the exam only on the material you could cover. God can do that. Are you following me? Don't shortchange God. Give him what's his and trust him to bless you with the time that you have left. What book did I say? What chapter? What 10? Verse 10, I should say. Read with me if you have my version. And the devil that deceived them was cast where? Into the lake of fire. Come on. Where the? beast and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation 20 verse 10. Now, how many beasts or beings are in that verse? Don't look at me, look at the verse. How many beings are in that verse in the flame of hell? Read the verse. What does it say? And the devil that deceived them was what? Cast into the? With the? And the? Yes. How many are in that verse? Three. The devil? The beast? Come on. The false prophet. What's our subject? Mm -hmm. Who is this devil? Who is this beast? And who is this false prophet? Who all work together to oppose the work of God. Go with me to Revelation 12. We read from verse 1. Our subject, 3 and 1, part 2. We have Revelation 12, reading from verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. 
Now we have a vision of a woman. The woman is clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, surrounded by light. She represents what? Come on. In prophecy, what does a woman represent? The church. Now, there are two kinds of churches in Revelation. Which church does she represent? The true church of God. Now, the true church of God has enemies. That's on a general scale. Every member of the true church of God has enemies. Verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold what? Great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and it cast them where? To the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to do what? Devour her child when? As soon as it was born. This is an enemy of the church. Of course, this is a reference to Herod, who was an agent of Satan, who tried to kill Christ by killing all children under two years old. Trying to get to Christ because he had heard that a king had been born in Bethlehem. This dragon, he stood before the woman for to devour her child as soon as it was born. That's enemy of the church number one. Let's go to chapter 13 as we continue. Three and one, part two. Revelation 13, reading from verse one. When you found it, say amen. amen. Let me pray again. Father, continue to be with me, please, as I deal with this very, very heavy subject. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns, ten crowns. And upon his head, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet was the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Now, read the next, keep, keep reading. What does the rest of it say? And the dragon, come on, gave him his power come on and his seat and great yes where did we meet that dragon in chapter 12 by the way let's go back to 12 learn a little more about the dragon that stood before the woman for to devour her child as soon as it was born back in chapter 12 let's read from verse 7 and there was war in heaven michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was the place found anymore in heaven. Verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. We meet this dragon way, way back even before the earth was made and Adam and Eve were made. There was a war in heaven. This being called the dragon, attacked Christ. There was a war. He was thrown out. And we learned from verse 9, angels came with him. We also learned from verse 9, he deceives the whole world. Of course, you've got to understand, except a few. And I pray God, some of the few are seated in this building now, and some of the few are watching online. The devil deceives overwhelmingly the whole world, except a few now. And so we have being number one, the dragon, Revelation 12. We have being number two, the beast, Revelation 13, 1 to 10. How do we know? The beast of Revelation 13, 1 to 10 is an... Uh, uh, a, a, an agent of the dragon. Why? The dragon gave him what? His power and his seat. And what else? Great. Uh, by the way, the devil can give you things. The devil gave this beast power, a throne, and great authority. And that authority is a worldwide authority. Now, let's go to verse 3 of Revelation 13. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, 
and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now read verse 4 of Revelation 13 very carefully, nice and loud, don't be shy. What does it say? And they worship what? The, the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Keep reading. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who can make war with him? They worship the dragon, and they worship the beast. Let's leave the dragon and the beast for a while. Let's go to verse 11 of Revelation 13. Our subject, three in one, part two. You have verse 11, Revelation 13. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. Look at verse 1 of Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of what? The sea. The beast, number one, rises out of the sea, or the beast of Revelation 13, 1 to 10. The beast of Revelation 13, 11 to 18 comes up out of the earth. And he had two horns as a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. Now we have the third beast. We have the dragon, Revelation 12. We have the first beast, Revelation 13, 1 through 10. We have the second beast, Revelation 13, 11, all the way to 18. We have three entities. Now, go back to Revelation 20. Let's read verse 10. Before we do that, let's take another look at the beast of Revelation 13, 1 to 10. Let's take a look at that beast more closely to, to anchor the fact and nail down the fact he is an agent of Satan, the dragon of Revelation 12. Verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head what? Ah, the name of blasphemy. And in verses 5 through 6, that beast blasphemes the name of God and those that dwell in heaven. So this beast is an associate of the dragon. Because the dragon waited before the woman to devour her seed as soon as it was born, which was Jesus Christ. In 12, the dragon tries to devour Christ. In 13, the first beast is a blasphemous beast. Now, let's listen to the third beast. Revelation 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Now read the next verse for me. And he... Exerciseth, come on, all the power of the... Yes, now, think. But where did the beast of verse 1 to 10 get its power? From the dragon. Now, the beast of 11 through 18, he exercises the same power. And so we have the dragon. We have the leopard-like beast. And we have the two-horned beast. What's our subject? Three in one, part two. It is what Bible scholars call the satanic trinity. You have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You have Satan, the satanic father. You have the beast whose deadly wound was healed, the satanic son. We have the false prophet, the satanic spirit. And I didn't say holy, the satanic spirit. Are you with me? We have three in one above. We have three in one on the earth. Let's take another look at three working for the same purpose, essentially three in one. Before I get to that, let me speak to God again. Father, simplify my language, dear God. For the sake of your glory and the comprehension of your people, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Go to Genesis chapter 3, no, chapter 2. Genesis 2. We read from verse 16. One of the most critical passages in the entire Bible, Genesis 2, 16, 7. I can't tell you how many sermons I begin with that passage. Many. When you found it, say amen. amen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, 
But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. The fact that God warned them tells us what about God? He did not want them to die. Let me say that again. The fact that God warned Adam and Eve tells us he did not want them to die. By the way, God hasn't changed. He does not want people to die. Well, let's go to chapter 3. We read from verse 1. Are you there? Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, which God said don't do, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, if God said, don't eat, you'll die, God did not want them to die. The devil said, eat. Why? Because he wanted them dead. That has not changed. The same way God hasn't changed in his desire for us to live, this devil has not changed in his desire to kill and to destroy. And his most effective method is disobedience. Mm. God said, don't eat. You'll die. The devil said, eat. And you'll live. Look at verse 1 again. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Now we know a serpent cannot talk. So what do we have going on? What do we have going on? How is the serpent talking? We haven't got all night. It's 10 after 7. How is the serpent talking? Satan is speaking through the serpent. So we have two beings, one unseen, the other seen. We have the serpent seen, we have Satan unseen. In Revelation 20 verse 10 and 12 and 13, we have the dragon not seen. We have the beast seen. We have the false prophet seen. Am I talking to myself or are you listening? We have the serpent seen. We have the devil unseen. Now, let's go to verse 6. Read with me. I ask you to read. You don't read, but I'll keep asking. By faith, maybe one day you'll be nice and read with me. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Now carefully, finish verse 6. And gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. Now, what did the devil tell the woman that she should do? Eat. What did the woman tell her husband? Eat. So we have three working against God. Name them. The devil, come on. Serpent, Eve. Sister Eve. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 55, paragraph 3. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 55, paragraph 3. Listen carefully. Having herself transgressed or sin. She now became the agent of Satan to work the ruin of her husband. When something is tough, it is still truth. 
Eve was for a while, not long, the agent of Satan. And so we had Satan talking to the animal, we had the serpent, and we had Eve. Now, let's go to another episode of the Bible where the devil spoke through someone. Let's go to Matthew 16 quickly. We read from verse 21. Our subject, what is it? Three and one, part two. What book did I say? What chapter? From what verse? 21. We have Matthew chapter 16. From verse 21, from that time forth began Jesus to speak and to show to his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. I will not allow you to go and die. Verse 23, but he turned and, re and said unto Peter, Get thee what? Behind me who? Satan. When Peter said, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee, who was really speaking? Satan through Peter. Right in the presence of Christ. So it's not difficult to believe that he spoke to the serpent. The devil, the serpent, Eve. The beast, the false prophet, the dragon. The dragon, we don't see. The beast, we see. The false prophet, we see. In Eden, the devil, Eve didn't see. She saw the serpent, and of course, Adam saw Eve. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. The Father, we've never seen. The Holy Ghost, come on, we've never seen. Finish my words. The Son, we've seen. God gives us something to see. Satan does the same thing. My brothers and sisters, there are three mighty powers working against the church of God. Working against whom? The church of God. Let me say something that's not politically correct. All churches do not belong to God. You ought to say amen. Amen if you believe in the remnant and if you truly understand the beast you ought to know that all churches do not belong to god go to galatians 1 let the bible make that very clear to you quickly it is now 20 after 7 galatians 1 let's read from verse 13. what's our subject all right you have galatians 1 we read from verse 13. Read microscopically, concentrate. Are you there now? Read with me. For you've heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion. That's the church. How that beyond measure, I persecuted the church of God and wasted it. That's another church. Are you seeing what I'm saying? Do you see the Jews' religion in Galatians 1.13? Yes or no? Nobody answered me. Read verse 13 for me out loud, those of you who have the King James Version. Read it for me. For you have heard of my, in time past, in the, the King James says Jews' religion. That's the church. How that beyond measure I did what? persecuted the church of God and wasted it, that's another church. How many churches are in that verse? Two. But how many belong to Christ? One. Oh, you're not with me tonight as you were last night. One. 
Paul worked for the one trying to destroy the church of Christ. Until Christ converted him, then he left that church and came to another church. Now, go to John chapter 10. Listen to Christ. And I'm winding down. Do you have John 10? We read verse 16. You know it very well. I won't say read with me because I'll be wasting my time. Here we go. Another shape I have which are not of this fold. Stop. What did Christ mean by this fold? The disciples. But he said, I have disciples in other folds. Them also I must bring. Is Christ a sheep stealer? What do you mean no? Does he take from other churches, yes or no? Yes. You're breaking my heart tonight. Does Christ take people from other churches? Yes. Other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, I will not leave them where they are. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. That's the voice of God. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now, I said, God is not the God of all churches. Are you with me? Jesus said of the Jewish church, your house is left unto you. Yes, gone. I turn to the Gentiles. Why am I saying that? The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are not enemies of all churches. You see, the beast is the church. Am I talking to Adventists? Let me say it again. The beast is the church. So the, <laughs> there is a religious system that works with the dragon. And so when I say there are three enemies of the church of God, I mean the church of God. I do not mean the churches of God. Unless you can go to the Old Testament and show me where God at any time had two special people. How many special people has God, did God have in the Old Testament? One. Name them quickly. The Israelites. Whether they were obedient or not, they were the descendants of Abraham. God never got rid of them and chose the Canaanites or got rid of the Israelites and chose the Philistines. He persisted, he persisted, and when finally he said that's enough, he started spiritual Israelites. And as surely as God only had one people then, he has only one people now. Blessed are they that do what? Do his commandments. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Revelation 12, 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, not the women. Hey, you're not listening. It's my fault. What can I do to get you to listen? And the dragon was wroth with the woman, not the women. And so this three in one, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet, are united in an attack upon God's church. And how is that church identified? They keep the commandments of God. I can say a lot more, but I'm going to let you go. Last night, three in one, we met the word, come on, light, life, all centered in Christ. Today we met the dragon, but I won't point at you, the dragon, the beast, 
and the false prophet. <laughs> Let me point this way. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They were together for one cause, to overthrow the kingdom of God, to destroy the people of God, to destroy the law of God. And God has a single solitary voice on the earth that upholds the law of God as binding, eternally binding, upholds the law of God as an expression of the very righteousness of God, upholds the law of God not as an instrument of salvation, but as a lifestyle, as a character description. It upholds the law of God as the lifestyle of heaven. It upholds the law of God as the constitution of the kingdom of God. When I say the kingdom of God, I mean the universal kingdom, the law of God, is the constitution throughout the universe and there are three powers united to overthrow god's law that powers those powers are the dragon give me the other two the beast the false prophet what's our subject three in one the dragon gives power to the beast and gives power to the false prophet as his agents to overthrow the church of god and the reign of God upon the earth. My brothers and sisters, I said earlier, the three enemies of God's church, we must personalize it. They are the enemies of every individual member of God's church. So those three are your enemies, as they are the enemies of the corporate church. Your defense and mine is in that person of whom the Bible says, and the great dragon was cast out. Quiz question for you, who cast him out? Jesus Christ. And as Christ cast him out then, he can cast him out of your life now. Let me give you two verses that should bring joy to your heart. Go to 1 John 3 verse 8, and go to Luke 10, 19 as quickly as you can, then I'll let you go. What two verses did I say? 1 John 3, 8, and the other one, Luke 10, 19. Let's start with 1 John 3, verse 8. When you found it, say amen. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Finish the verse. For this purpose. Come on. The Son of Man was manifested. Why? that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whatever Satan is doing in your life, Christ came to undo it. Now, go to Luke 10. Let's read verse 19. And if these two verses don't cause you to jump in your heart in joy, I don't know what will. Luke 10, verse 19. Nice and clear and loud, behold, I give you power over what? To tread on serpents and scorpions, keep reading, and over all the power of the enemy. Finish the verse. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Jesus says, I will give you, speaking to the disciples. You see, he had sent out 70 disciples to preach. They came back rejoicing. He's speaking to the disciples, not the world. He says, I will give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Whether it's the Satan, the beast, or the false prophet combined, I'll give you power to resist them. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. But he's talking to disciples, not just church members, disciples. Because not every church member is a disciple. Because it was church members who said, crucify him. And so tonight, tonight I ask you, are you close to Christ? Who is the one who leads the armies against Satan? When we read in Revelation 12, 7 to 9, 
and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against a dragon, and the dragon fought, and his angels, and prevailed not. They lost. Every time Christ and Satan have met in battle, finish my words, Satan, come on, has lost. Why should he win in your life? How many of you will say with me, Father, give me that victory in Christ. Can I see your hand? In, uh, stand up with me. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear God, we thank you for the victory of Christ. He has an unblemished record in his struggles with Satan. Every time they have met, Satan has lost. Dear God, as your children, we will invite the attack of the enemy by invite, I mean, just by following you, Satan will come after us. Let us live day by day in the knowledge, dear God, that Christ who threw him out long time ago will throw him out now the christ who defeated him eons ago will defeat him in our lives today but we must be submitted to christ who is the word the light and the life through him we can overcome the dragon the beast and the false prophet, not only as a church under his leadership, but as individuals. Now, dear God, as your people depart from this place, and those online, let them leave with the confidence that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. Let them leave with the confidence that Christ will give to his people power over all the power of the enemy. Father, we recommit our lives to you now. Let us be agents of righteousness. Let us be agents of holiness. Let us be representatives of the kingdom of grace. And use us to bring others to Christ, I pray. Bring us back tomorrow night, I ask. In Jesus' name and for his sake, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Before you sit and before you dash off, what will you take from the message tonight? Someone on this side. Okay, I'll come back to you this side. I'll come back to you that side. Yes. There are three powers. Yes, opposing the church of God. The dragon, the beast, false prophet. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Say amen for that little child. Mm -hmm. What will you take from the message? Yes. Say it again. Jesus said yes to the uttermost. He alone can undo what Satan is trying to do in your life and in the world. Somebody else, what will you take from the message? Yes, sister. Say it again. Disobedience, yes, leads to death. That's why God warned them, the devil wants us dead. And so he tempts us to disobey because he wants you dead and out of the kingdom. Somebody else. What will you take from the message? It's 7.32. Yes. Oh, yes. Whatever God tries to do for you, Satan tries to do the opposite. God wants you alive. The devil wants you dead. God wants you to study his word. The devil wants you on the internet 24 hours a day. God wants you to live a healthy life. The devil wants you to eat as though you're in Babylon. Whatever God wants, Satan wants the opposite. Even though he presents his ideas as beneficial. One more. What will you take from... Yes. Not all churches belong to God. What does Jesus say? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father. And what is his Father's will? Condensed in the Ten Commandments. That's the will of God. One more. I said one more. I'll say it again. One more. Then I let you go. One more. What will you take from the message?
Yes. Christ is prepared to give us the power over all the power of the enemy. Somebody else. One more. Ah, oh, we have one over here. Jesus wins. Jesus wins. How many times? All. The, you know, the only time Jesus doesn't win is when we refuse his Holy Spirit work in our lives. And then we embarrass Christ. We make him look weak. That's why the heathens say, where is now their God? Let Christ win in your life. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Let all God's people say, Amen and Amen. Travel safely. God bless you at work tomorrow. Make some time and come back to hear His word.